Recently, a viewer on YouTube asked Corel, how do I create keyframed animations using Boris Graffiti? And this is the video response. So let's go into it. If you're in this template mode of Graffiti, you're going to have to switch out. You have to go into advanced mode to create keyframed animations. OK, so here I am in advanced mode for Graffiti. This is the title you just saw. And if I select this track here, I want to show you a nice little trick. Click on this button for Smart View. Actually click on it twice to toggle it. Then it will show you only the tracks in your timeline that have keyframes already. So if you're doing any kind of real animation work, this shortcut is essential. Collapse that up. Toggle Smart View again. Here are all the keyframes that were involved in the word keyframing. So a nice little rotate, fade in, slight size change. And that's all represented right here. So really not a lot of keyframes to create that nice motion. Also, at the very start here, if you look in your timeline, check these boxes. This box tells you the interpolation for the keyframe. I have all these different possibilities. The symbols will become known to you when you experiment with them. And the values, of course. And if you go one level deeper, you actually get the curve or the graph of the motion of the keyframe. Um, with a line. These same values are represented in your controls window too and you can change them from here also. So if you want to change the value of a keyframe of course just select it and you can change it here or you can change it here. You can even move it around and if you're in the graph mode you can change it there too. So these are all situations where we already have keyframes. So let's start from scratch and see how this whole process gets started. So new project. So nothing going on. Let's create some random text. Again, no keyframes yet. Now, if this is your first time or you're new to Graffiti, you probably haven't changed any of your default settings. Now, the default setting in Graffiti is to create keyframes whenever you change a parameter. You can tell if you're in that state or not by looking in your controls window. See this little key right here? This is the animate or static mode button. If it's red, it means you're in animate mode. If it's gray, you're in static mode and you won't create any keyframes. So I can move that around and it just stays there. So if I undo that change, go into animate mode, move it around. See this? Now I've got a keyframe there and it automatically animates from the neutral position to that state. It also creates a keyframe at the end of your timeline. So basically, you have a full half cycle of an animation there. And this can be really convenient, because now you can just go into the middle of your timeline, kind of deselect that frame, and start changing stuff. So even just doing that, I only had to create one keyframe, and I've really got three now in my timeline. So that gives you a nice way to just play around with motion. Creating any new keyframes in between is really easy because all you have to do is change your parameter. You may have noticed it's a nice smooth motion on these keyframes. That's because the default is ease in, ease out. Let's go back into Smart View. Uh, see how handy that is? And I can select the next or previous keyframe with these arrows here. So see they're all that ease in, ease out style. And even the keyframe itself has a special shape for that. You can right click on this keyframe and you can change the interpolation from there too. Let's say, let's make this a linear keyframe. This one too. Okay, so linear will not have that nice smooth motion to it. It'll be very direct, very straightforward. No acceleration or deceleration, just constant motion. So you can change. Um, to a lot of different styles. Let's actually reset everything here. You can reset from this box that will erase all of your keyframes. You can also say none, give you a similar effect. If you say constant, that won't erase the keyframes. That'll just hold the value that you had. Okay, so in a sense, it does erase your keyframes, but it keeps you know whatever value you had selected at the time. Anyway, I want to reset everything. Also, very handy, reset button right here. Gets rid of all of the changes. OK, so here's my starting point. Let's move the text to this corner here. 
and put it up into this corner here. Okay, so like I said, the default motion is ease in, ease out. Uh, let's give something else going on here. Let's make it rotate uh, once. Okay, fun stuff. Now let's change some of these and see how it looks. So I'm going to right click, change this to linear. Okay, and let's right click here too and change it to accelerate. So linear, I already explained, accelerate should start slow and speed up as it does. Uh, let's go back into rotate Z, select this last keyframe. Let's do hold. Now hold um, isn't going to do anything special until we change the keyframes before it. So let's put a keyframe in here. Instead of changing a parameter, I can also click in my timeline. So if I type Control N, that'll create a new keyframe for that track. And see how it holds the rotation value right there. That's what hold does. It can be very useful. Let's create another keyframe. This time I'm going to type Alt and left mouse click. It creates another keyframe too. I can change the value here. So it goes immediately from this value to that value. So if you want a really jerky or sudden motion, hold is a really good choice. Okay, I don't want either of those to exist now that I've shown you what they do. Let's go back into the Y motion and let's use one of these more interesting looking ones. Uh, jitter, for example. Sometimes it helps to look at the graph to see what's going on. And let's put another keyframe in here to help see it. Okay, now if you look carefully, I'll increase the handle size so it's more obvious. See what jitter is doing? It's kind of like the hold value, except it's randomly jumping in, uh, in value. So that's what jitter does. It's kind of fun, definitely gives it a sketchy feel. Let's do something smoother than that. Let's do swing. Okay, again, alternates the value on its own, but it's continuous this time. And it's very large values there. Let's bring those down using the handles. So think of all the keyframes we'd have to use to do this manually. So this is a very nice shortcut. Similarly, you have the next setting which is bounce. So bounce simulates an object falling and hitting the ground. So it makes more sense to do it with an object going down, not up, but you get the idea. And of course these are modifiable too. Got the frequency from this one and amplitude. They can both adjust amplitude, but it's kind of easier to think of it as one being frequency and one the other. And of course, these other values we've already gone through, linear, constant, etc. Just hold it there. Okay. Now, let's say you want to create a lot of keyframes and you don't care what they are, or you want them to be random. No problem. Check this out. So if I select two keyframes, oh, well, I'm moving them at the same time. That's convenient, but that's not what I want to do. So just select two keyframes and then go into the track we have a generate keyframes button, or function, I should say. Click on it, and here are some keyframes. Okay, you see them kind of going all crazy like that? Well, you can change what those keyframes are, how many there are, and what their values are. So it's the next best thing to actually just creating them yourself. If you go into a keyframe palette window here, see this is where you can change all the default settings in our keyframes. Uh, the default interpolation, so maybe we, won't, we want it to be linear, and maybe we want to toggle it to be hold. And here's the keyframe generator tab. Um, how many is the count? So let's create 10, and let's wiggle them with a value of 6. The wiggle is basically how much the value goes up and down. And let's make these uh, ease and ease out interpolation. Okay, so that all looks good. So now I'm going to select this again, track, generate, keyframes, 
and there we go. It's a kind of a fun seesaw motion there. And also note that since I changed my default settings, if I want to create new keyframes now, they're going to have uh, a linear interpolation instead of ease in, ease out. So if I erase all those, go here, create something new, you can see that it's going in a very straight line no smooth motion there. And the very last thing, let's say you just want to toggle the interpolation between your two favorite settings. You can do that by alt clicking on this box here. And that's what this is all about, the toggle interpolation. Alright, so there you have a crash course on keyframing in Boris Graffiti.